So, okay, welcome everyone to the um, Governance and Operations Committee meeting, uh, May 1st, 2023. Uh, we just want to remind uh, the members of the public that you can either be uh, in the committee room with us or you can also watch this uh, meeting via Zoom. And the link will be posted to the City of Trail website. Um, so tonight we're here to uh, review the 2023 budget, and I will hand over the meeting to CAO McClure. Okay. Uh, well, thanks, Mayor Jones, and thanks, Council, for attending. I know that it's a uh, uh, delayed this year. We've been under incredible pressure with uh, being down a major staff person for the last three months, and kind of that what that's caused to try to get an audit and budget done. But we are near the end, and I know that. Um, community to be interested in kind of what's going on and we'll go through that tonight but just as a reminder for council that back in December we already did the utility side so we went through the budgets for the water and sewer utilities we set the rates uh, for them as well as for garbage that was all done last year and so now uh, kind of the last sort of component of putting the whole jigsaw puzzle together is dealing with the general fund operating in capital uh, we had a GOC a couple of weeks ago where we had Director McIsaac and Director Davison go through the majority uh, of what our capital tends to be uh, for that group. And so I've got a couple of highlights on a couple of the other things. And we also have our airport manager joining us today, Mr. Morelli. Uh, I don't know if any of you have had a chance to meet him yet. Yes. So <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. So thank you. That's one of the things that uh, you guys have been able to join. But uh, for Councillor Butler, I think you've already met. And um, Councillor Benson, I'm not sure if you have or not. Anyway. He'll be speaking a bit today on a couple of the slides on the airport because he's done a great job. He's like myself, only been here just over a year, or I'm not quite a year, but he's a little bit longer than that. And um, taking an airport on and just after the time of a pandemic is not an easy role to take on. So I just some real positive things that are going on and some of the ideas that he has. And uh, he's going to speak briefly to that when we get to the, some of the slides that we have on the airport. Now, I know council themselves, and this wouldn't be the public, they don't have the um, some of the detailed items. It's just too small to put on a screen, but we'll be going mm -hmm. through a combination of some slides on my screen, but also the uh, handouts that I provided to, to, uh, to the council. Uh, for those that are here, of course, and I did email them out. I don't know, some of you might find it difficult because you're sort of looking up at a screen and may not be able to flip back and forth, but hopefully we'll be able to uh, get ourselves through this. Okay, um, so I'm just going to go through a couple of slides here because I think really all everyone really wants to know is what's the tax rate increase? Because I think that's what everyone really wants to know. And again, I've got a recommendation for that. Again, I know for council that uh, you have already seen this. I don't know why this is happening. Um, next slide, please. Oh, there we go. I think we're having some. So just a quick facts, and this is maybe more for the community because council's already seen this a couple of times, but just one of those uh, concepts on the city's operational revenue is close to $27 million. Now that would be, because when you're looking at today, you're looking at just your general fund. So that would include general fund, water fund, and sewer fund. So when you combine all those together and send the total operational expenses for all three of those would be that 23.5 million. Mathematically, very quickly, you can see, hey, you've got more money coming in than you require. But the reason for that is that because we use the, the difference pays down debt and it also deals with capital reserves from which we fund our, fund our capital purchases. In the general fund itself, and uh, the, the operational expenses and allocations to reserve in capital was budgeted at uh, 2.1 million in 2022, and it's funded with approximately uh, 15 million in taxation, which is better than a lot of communities. A lot of communities, it's a it's a 50, a two, uh, you know, two to one. So, for example, you're using uh, you have um, twice as much, or so you have twice as much revenue coming from. Uh, you have twice as much expenses coming from what's going to be covered by your taxation. So if you have, for example, you've got a 1% inflationary increase, you likely are going to need a 2% increase in taxes to cover that. So sort of that ratio. You're you're better than than uh, than that here at the City of Trail. A 1% increase in taxation produces about $1.59 million. Uh, again, we've talked about this. We've got about 69 regular full-time employees. You can see the other part-time, and then we had some casuals. Okay, the highlight, uh, 
I'm recommending a 4.47 over our average overall property tax increase for all the properties. One of the reasons that we can do this is revenue improvements from the TMC, TAALC, or the Trail Memorial Center, sorry, and the, the Aquatic Center and Airport are assisting keeping the tax increase lower than what had been required. One thing I thought was important for the community to know and for council is that we did receive uh, from the Growing Communities Grant, this was all, all, uh, all these pals in the province received this funding. Uh, ours is close to $3 million. Now, right now, I'm just going to set that up as revenue and have it as an allocation to reserve until council's had the opportunity to go through their strategic priority session. Uh, from there, I would assume that there will be a direction on, we would like to see this with this, or do you want to you know, uh, work with it in, in different ways? Uh, one thing I thought was important is just to speak about the 2023 capital budget. It is significant at $9.2 million. Uh, some of the major projects that are included are the Daniel retaining wall. Now, this is also not only dealing with a breach or a falling down retaining wall. We did get a, an engineering uh, work done to kind of shore it up, but it's that work that needs to be completed. These, this work is expensive. Um, but uh, coupled with that is not just a retaining wall, because we are going to upgrade the storm sewer, which is a big factor, because if you're not dealing with that water, it will just continue to go down through the retaining walls and break it out later. And one of the biggest factors on any of the jobs that we have is pay leave. It's expensive. And when you uh, are going to do it, um, it's really important to prioritize. And so if you're going to do a group project like this, where you're taking up all of the retaining wall, that's going to have to be digging into what would be the paving. And then also you're going to be dealing with um, with the uh, uh, the um, infrastructure itself of storm of being able to have that collection kind of component. So that's a big project. Uh, we all know and celebrated that the the kid, kids ranks upgrade, and that's again to the floor of the boards is is, uh, is already underway, and that's also been made possible by the uh, generous donation by the Murphy Foundation. Uh, one of the big ticket items, again, this is not all things, but it's big ticket items is we have that plow truck purchase. It should be showing up here anytime, although there's not a lot of snow that will it still gets used for other things in the city. Uh, another big component is that we are waiting on the architects. We've got a design, new design that uh, would appear to be within budget for the daycare. Uh, council may not have heard that discussed uh, too often. It's been other things, but um, $2.5 million is what we have approximately for that particular um, project. And uh, I've, and again, we'll jump into the, one of these pages we have here and looking through that, that summary for capital. Uh, I've kind of split it up into a million in, in 2023 and 1.5 in 2024. We are right now just waiting on a quantity surveyor to go over the new design, which is a much smaller daycare than what they have previously had hoped for, uh, with the expectations that we come in, that we have a project that we can do with the problem that we have. Yes, ma'am. Is there room to expand the daycare down the road if we have more funds or get money to do that? Yeah, well, we've looked at having the ability to uh, expand it okay. and that was something that the architect has put into place, but okay. we're pretty comfortable with what we are creating now. Okay. And, uh, but it is something we'll find when we get a little bit further down that road. Yeah. yeah. Um, not always easy, that under a building, mm -hmm. but uh, some of those things have worked out. You leave some dead ends for uh, piping and things like that. Mm -hmm. Certainly something to talk about. And um, while we're just kind of talking on the capital, and I know that the, the public out there won't see it, but I did send out a, a couple page summary and I just wanted council to go over that. And it looks like this, it's called the capital summary and then it's got the capital reserve. It's a two page kind of document. And uh, I don't know if anyone, you guys can see that. Yeah. Anyway. Capital expenditure, five year plan. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so part of it, I just wanted to go over it with council uh, for a few reasons. One, we know that we had the um, the directors come and speak to both basically the parks and recreation and the transportation services, which as you can see, make up a good 90% uh, of the cost, but a couple of pieces that weren't uh, spoken to to council uh, was the uh, computers, but our tech, our IT component. Uh, 2023 is a big year for refresh on having all the laptops and um, and uh, phones and certain things dealt with. And that's what the 2023 project is. Uh, the next line down there on line 11 is uh, the daycare. And that's where you can see where that's fitting. Um, I think a real important piece here for me as well is that we're really well funded for 2023. Uh, you can see in 2024. So if I direct your eyes down to uh, row 53 under 2024, 
because we've got an expectation in 2024 at this time, and we're not in that year, but of $11.3 million in capital, our revenue that we have uh, going each year into uh, from general revenues into the capital reserve obviously is not enough. We are going to be tapping into the capital surplus amount. Uh, we also are quite successful with grants, which is a great news, but you can even see even on there, we've got a gap. And so for today, what I have there is I've kind of filled it in from using general surplus. Now, again, uh, when we flip over the next stage, you'll see that we're using that. And then in future years, we'll start to pay that back. One of the things that the city of Trail is fortunate with is that we're pretty healthy in our, our reserve for the capital. So it allows me to feel comfortable that for this year at this time, uh, we can put that in there as a placeholder. My expectation is that when we get to 2024's budget, which actually will be sooner than you probably really expect or, or want, um, we will have a more a detailed conversation on how we're going to fund that. Is that the right way to do it? Do we need to maybe look at debt if it's something that's big enough? Or do we also need to maybe look at shifting priorities? If there's anything that I've ever noticed in all my times of doing these budgets is that people have the big eyes are at the buffet and they think that they're going to get 10 projects done and at the end of the day they get four now not not for lack of trying but for whatever reasons things go on and there tends to be some shifting of priorities into the future years but what i am comfortable with is that what we have in the capital reserve for this year plus the allocation plus the grant revenues that we have available um, we will be able to be successful uh, in funding 2023 without an issue and keeping everything full. So that was a, a really good news story for me. And part of what you'll see is if I get you to slip over to the next page, which just sort of speaks to the capital reserve. And I think as we learn together and as we grow together, I, I think that the city of Trail needs to look at how we how many reserves we have, what we're doing for reserves, what we're putting money away for. We'll see that a bit in the document that I provided to, for today on our general fund and where we're seeing some of the allocations that are going out. But you'll see that in under column D in 2022, as I'm finishing up the year end here, that the opening balance was not a lot of money. Uh, but one thing that became very clear as I was looking through it is that we did have uh, council agreed to in 2022 to allocating $2.8 million towards capital. And of course, the capital expenses did not come in as high, uh, or they didn't get as done. Uh, not as much of the capital projects were completed as had hoped. So uh, we ended up with a, a surplus there. But the other bigger part, and I've got that highlighted in red, is a million dollars basically. And that, from what I was looking at, relates to previous years where instead of the allocation that has gone from general, subtracting what the amount of expenses were, so that's usually when you've got to carry for a project. Instead of it going into the capital reserve, it ended up in the general reserve. And so because this year we've had a very healthy uh, year, um, I'm taking an opportunity to make that right, and I'm adjusting that. So that money, which should have gone into the general reserve, uh, into the capital reserve, uh, is this year going to be put into that reserve, which again will help us um, as we carry forward. And as we move into future years, that will be certainly something that would be expected or required is that if we've allocated money to the capital reserve and we don't spend it, it needs to go into the capital reserve. Mm -hmm. And that will help us as we track into the future. Because you can see there that uh, for even for 2023, we come out, we, we're not too bad. We've got a pretty healthy balance of a million bucks. Uh, but by 2024 and 2025, you can see we're down to 100,000. Um, then in 2026, we start to getting, you know, at that point in time, uh, we have the funding being allocated is more than what the capital requests are. And you can see that also I'm here starting to pay back that general reserve that surplus of the 250 each year for a couple of years. And I mean, those are all just pieces that make the puzzle work for right now. 2027 is a long time away, and we know that these numbers will change. They'll change automatically. But again, just wanted Council A to get some comfort on when we're looking at capital, this will be a key reserve that we'll be looking at. There are other reserves that we have um, and that they do use, but this will be your functioning one. We may look at in the future of whether or not we want to break them up into like a building reserve versus a, you know, a infrastructure reserve so that you know that this, this money is earmarked for the Memorial Center and the Aquatic Center or Public Works Building, uh, whereas other funds that would be for doing uh, infrastructure sewer, uh, storm sewer, um, and other paving and those sorts of things would be more public works directed so you don't get kind of mixing and kind of separating but that's again a, a conversation for another day just feeling comfortable that at the end of the um after this year that we'll be in a healthier spot and looking good for the future 
uh, with more work to be done. So I don't know if council has any questions or concerns, but this is sort of, again, where right now we're balanced and we've got the five-year plan, understanding that you're always focused on the year that you're in. Uh, and then as you're looking out future, as you start getting out two, three, four years, the numbers become a little bit more uh, dubious, not not for lack of trying, but just nobody knows what's going to happen in those types of time period. So again, this is one way too to showing here's what the asks have been from uh, from staff, and um, and again they will be revisited every year, and council will have an opportunity to get presentations and make decisions on what that capital budget looks like in the future. Now, my expectation is is that we will be having this conversation at the end of January of 2024, not May 1st. So again, so that's my commitment to uh, to council on that as long as I'm still healthy enough to be here. Go. Okay, I'm gonna move on uh, to my next slide here. Because right. I thought this was important, not only for council, but for our community as well, to sort of see what's happening in the province, because it has been a year of inflation, cost pressures. Um, you know, I think the city is doing well, with, with where we're looking at a 4.47 amount, you can see that there are spatterings in there, but there's certainly a lot of pressure around the community. And, and in a year when you would kind of expect to see at a normal in that two to three rate, that's certainly pitting more on that five, six seems to be the average. And again, not unexpected when you think about what's gone on with inflation in the last year. Anyway, this is just more of a, a, um, a talking point and just a sharing with, with others. Okay, um, this is again, we're not quite finished the audit, but here's some of the revenues. Again, you can see how much taxation is a factor. Um, what does that say with that 1.4 is another say, a way of saying that based on our revenues expectation for 2022, 62% uh, of those were coming from uh, from taxation. Uh, you know, did have really some good hopes for, for grants and that's also successful, but you can see that um, on the overall revenues, that's where we lie. Uh, here are our expenses, and, and you can see a couple of things. One, that our parks and recs and uh, welfare services, so that's your culture, so that's your riverfront center, that's your uh, trail aquatic and leisure center, that is your um, your parks that you have, beautiful parks here in trail, as well as the trail and general center. You can see what a percentage of the budget it is at, uh, at $5.7 million, a uh, significant amount. And uh, other communities, uh, so for example, if you're over in a place like a Castigar or or Nelson, um, they don't aren't they don't see it on their operating budget the way that Trail does. Uh, trail is sort of that responsible. We've been working on the partnerships with our regional partners that come and use the facility, but there theirs is like it used to be uh, for the city of Trail, where the Regional district had that service inside it. So the regional district in Trail and uh, it, regional district of Central Kootenai uh, was responsible for the, the uh, centers over in Kamsagar and in uh, Nelson. So the taxpayer doesn't kind of see that, but they would see it sort of on that tax requisition that comes from the uh, RDCK. So sometimes it does get hidden in there, but this is one that I think it's important is this is an expensive service, it is a heavily subsidized service. Anyone knows like a rink and a pool, the cost of them are never going to be covered by the $7 skate or the $7 uh, you know time or whatever the cost is to go to the pool with your family. I was going to take this opportunity now to dive a bit into those other sheets, but um, I also wanted to recognize that uh, the airport manager is here. And I, uh, again, not only hoping that he would be able to come and, and speak with council, uh, but we would just go over uh, sort of what he was seeing for his budget for uh, 2023 as compared to 2022, and then have a brief conversation about uh, what 2022 looked like. And so then I'll, I'll hand it over to Rico with a screen. I'll pick you up there if you start talking. Yeah, the screen there. Well, talk to me. Oh, you're on the. Okay. Yeah, I have it here. Oh. Uh, thank you, Colin. So, as we can see, uh, 2022, um, uh, our budget, we had a deficit of, uh, predicted deficit at that point in time, $294,200. Um, 22, uh, 2022 projected now, we're looking at the uh, about 140710 mark. We were able to uh, bring that deficit down. Uh, one major factor was uh, council's approval last year for the increase in user passenger fees. 
that was a big one. Um, that and an increase in uh, in fuel sales uh, really changed that margin last year. Coming out of the pandemic, fuel sales came up again. Passenger travel came up again. We, we saw really good numbers, so that was a contributing factor to that. Um, any questions on that sheet at that point? And like um, when you were speaking before, would be uh, when you first kind of took on how many flights a day did we have? So those those they, it was generally uh, two flights per day, except for Saturdays. So Saturday there was one flight per day, and that was the standard lot pretty much through all of last year, which is uh, now changing as of this month. We are going to two flights every day with potential for additional flights based on demands of uh, Pacific Coastal Airlines. So as their demand goes up, they're looking at putting potentially even a third flight on a few times a day, oh. right? So, okay. and I think it's important, uh, you know, for council, new council, yeah. there's some of the uh, council that previously would be aware of this, but again, you know, it might seem somewhat counterintuitive, but much like the, not to the same degree, but the airport is something that is subsidized. So yeah. council uh, you know, in operating this and having this as a gateway to come to our community, mm -hmm. based on what we were budgeting for revenues over expenses, you can see that there was you know $300,000 expected to be able to keep the airport going there in 2022. Obviously, uh, as the manager was speaking to, we had a much better year. Um, you know, obviously, the uh, having the increase in the passengers and getting that back full flights. I know that also uh, Air Canada's decision, I believe, just to go down to one flight uh, a day coming out of uh, Castlegar and then no flights to Calgary either is uh, is also a, a factor. And, you know, us being pretty full pretty consistently, in our, especially over the last four or five months, I believe. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And the important service that the airport also provides in the sense of uh, for medevacs. Yes. Um, obviously, very important for our regional hospital here. Um, as well as, uh, for example, in the summertime last year, we, we had a fairly, in our area, low fire season. Mm -hmm. But in previous years, it has proved vital to uh, fueling capabilities for a lot of yeah. the aviation industry that do conduct the firefighting in the area. So I want to point out the importance of those two factors as well when it comes to the airport. And then when we do have fires, that's, I guess, the positive for us is that we get the fuel. <laughs> Yeah, there is a, definitely a revenue that comes from those fuel sales, sadly, at the cost of uh, yeah. catastrophe, yeah. however. Yeah. But yes, just having that capability there is, is vital for the area. Yeah, so, Which is, is what's another piece, too, is um, not unexpected as everyone goes to fuel up your vehicle, the cost of aviation fuel also uh, wow. went up. Yeah. So again, we... Uh, make a, a markup on that a margin but the cost of buying it so you get sort of hey the fuel is way more expensive uh, to purchase but it also gets charged out a lot higher so that's why you're seeing a real jump in what the other revenue uh, account balances and then also the offsetting ones where the operational uh, supplies and services so it's not a case of uh, something happening untowards it's this this is that sort of net effect we have adjusted that in the 2023 budget to sort of recognize what we believe um, uh, the results will be so maybe just that's the only thing I just maybe if I could uh, manage it early is just speak to um, what you're thinking here on on your revenues and uh, it's most of your expenses yeah. are pretty yeah. absolutely so um, 2020 through uh, 2023 uh, revenue increases they're going to be uh, in part due to uh, one is the increase in flights that's going to be a big one uh, we also uh, are doing a new lease agreement with Pacific Coastal Airlines that's going to be coming. From a council, more than likely, I believe, Colin, right? For uh, or are we not doing the council on? I, on, the, on the lease, I think we were able to sign that. We are able to sign that without. Okay, so there's going to be a new lease agreement signed here within the uh, coming weeks of Pacific Coastal. Okay. Um, there's also increase of uh, car rental revenue that comes through uh, Practicar. Uh, there's a certain amount that we receive in um, vehicles rented from the airport per day, right? So we've negotiated a renewal on that lease, so that's going to generate more revenue. And as air traffic continues to uh, improve, uh, we get more we get more traffic using vehicle rentals. Um, I'm also anticipating a uh, a parking increase uh, fees for parking this year um, because we have <laughs> very low parking rates currently at the airport uh, that uh, we're looking at increasing. Um, as well as I'm going to be diving into some marketing opportunities that we have available at the airport. Uh, when you, if you look at our airport there, we have signage, we have advertising, we have those things that uh, 
I want to go out into the community and uh, expand on that. So, so based on those numbers, um, as well as I want to reiterate uh, that last year's uh, user fee agreement really will come into play into this budget because last year it was signed in the summertime. So roughly we only received about four or five months of that revenue with that increase in passenger fees. Now we're looking at a full year of those rates. So, so that's where the majority of that, uh, that revenue is going to come. Um, and we're predicting again, uh, this year, as we did last year, about a deficit of roughly about $140,000. Which is aligned with what the results were this year. Yeah. And again, the hope is, and, and of course, uh, the explanation or any kind of increases to those uh, parking uh, fees, fees will come to council. We just wanted to, yeah. we're expecting that we will get an increase and we've sort of <laughs> yeah. budgeted for that. So not to put yeah. any pressure on Yeah. Uh, that's, that's nice. uh, any questions for the department manager? I mean, I guess it's just my ignorance because I don't know enough. Um, so is it a per ridership service that we get the revenue from? The like user every, fee agreement? Yeah, yes, per so person in and out of the airport and is a user fee agreement. And that's part of the ticket that goes back to the airport. That, okay. that correct. Okay. Yes. The airline collects that and then we generate that revenue off the aircraft, uh, from the uh, airline on a monthly basis. Okay, and then same with the medivac, same thing. There's a user agreement. So no medivac is uh, is 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 no cost for medivac right. at the airport. Okay. Just would be fueling them. Yes, their fuel uh, that they that they use. Okay. Yes. okay. We make the the twenty percent uh, revenue off 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 anybody when it comes to fuel. Okay. I'm just trying to understand yeah, no, where yeah, it absolutely. all comes in. Yeah. Uh, how it all flex. That's yeah. a great question. Um and do is there landing fees uh for so we have to look at the, the landing fee aspect. Uh, at this point right now, no. Um, just for the simple fact, our majority of landings are medevac. Uh, we have some private aviation that does come in, but there's not a lot of foot traffic, especially since the pandemic. But it is something that we're going to eventually look at as regards to landing fee. Uh, just another question. Yes. What do you think increasing um, transportation uh, from the airport into town, do you think that would increase? revenues in any way to perform like if there was some sort of agreement with like a trap busing or something or uh mm -hmm. into town or shuttling or something that they have exclusive I believe that was looked at uh okay. previously okay. um not so much as a you know a revenue perspective mm -hmm. but more as a accessibility so, yeah. perspective and uh it's something we're definitely going to be looking at down the road here as well but at this point in time I I there, there is there is a requirement. We do only have one, I can believe now, two taxi services in town. Mm -hmm. So there is limited availability yeah. um, getting in there. It's something that uh, I'd like to get in discussion with at the airline as well, mm -hmm. because they currently have a bus that they use to shuttle people if they have to under circumstances mm -hmm. and maybe, you know, work with the airline and provide that service. Yeah, I think that would be great. Because right now, most traffic, uh, if you're aware, most traffic is personal motor vehicles, yeah. you know, with parking at the airport. Right. There is no bus service that, that runs right away. Come in here for a contract to look at something for a job mm -hmm. or whatever, and there's, you know, someone's got to pick them up or drop them off. That's or, correct. Yeah, it would be nice to have that availability for. Yeah, that's something we're definitely going to look into. Thank you. Okay. Not seeing any more questions for airport manager Swirly. I'm, I'm going to move on. Ms. Mayor Joe, do you have a question? No. 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 Okay. Sorry. Okay. You're off the hot seat. Um, so I wanted to talk here uh, on both. Sorry. Again, part of it is being able to show uh, the tra trail products and leisure center. Again, another. Um, you kind of a continuum here in that some of these are subsidized and not not uh, again it would be basically anywhere that it's subsidized so it's not like trails different but one of the things I just wanted just to look at on a quick level was just sort of the revenues and then over expenses and one thing you'll notice here is unlike the airport there tends to be some sometimes correlation so if you're busier that means that maybe you need to hire another lifeguard um, now again this year was a difficult one for uh, some of the operational supplies and services uh, component for the Trail Aquatic Leisure Center. And I'll, I'll let uh, Director Davison uh, speak in if she is here. I think she's here. So um, about this particular uh, projected uh, budget actuals, and um, are you there, Director Davison? Now I am. Yes. <laughs> oh, you're not. 
<laughs> Small connection issues, but yes, I'm here. Uh, so, sorry. I apologize. I just was going to say while you're here, I didn't know if you had any uh, highlights or if any, just on this particular part, you projected to budgets. And then uh, again, looking at, um, we'll look at the budget to budget, just allowing you to speak a few few words and then we can talk with council if they have any questions. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I have anything significant to add. I think um, it's a, a bit what we were sort of maybe expecting and sort of hoping for that, you know, at the start of the year, the way the budgets were um, developed for 2022 was still very much uh, under the influence um, or impact maybe of COVID is a better way to say that. And so we were very conservative over what the year could look like, not knowing how the pandemic was going to unfold. And of course, for the first part of the year, we were still uh, actually right up through till June 30th, we were very much impacted. But um, as service was able to open up, it was nice to see that um, people took us up on that opportunity and certainly started to come back um, to services come the fall. So that's a little bit of what you're seeing from what the budget was compared to how it sort of ended up. And then just on the the budget for uh, 2022, a couple of things um, for 2023, I should say, that I'll note is, um, I mean, a few small minor adjustments, but you will see that the um, operational supplies and services uh, in particular has jumped. Part of that is because we're moving away from uh, what we would classify as operating capital kind of being in a capital fund where it always gets expensed. And what happens is when we show you the financial statements this year, you'll see that. Uh, and it's not a, uh, it's a way of presentation more than anything. A stapler, in a sense, is a capital item. You're only going to buy a stapler once, but you're not going to capitalize it. Uh, mm -hmm. So again, if you've got money that is going to go towards painting or these repairs, my thought process uh, in the when that CFO hat on is to say, uh, we should really put that right in the operating budget because we're going to use that painting every year. We're going to do those repairs. So it's sort of having it in a separate area. And so that's one of the things that I had done uh, for um, uh, for that. Um, and other than that, I was going to move on maybe to um, the Toronto Memorial Center. Okay. Uh, again, here, I think a positive note uh, when you look at what we budgeted for revenues, that um, that the projected ended up being uh, more revenue than we expected. So more uh, rentals on the rink. We know that having the, um, the space open longer was also helpful. Uh, but again, we also were seeing, uh, you know, a big year of, of repairs uh, being a factor. And um, again, too, when I look at uh, the 2023 budget, you'll notice that, again, with some minor adjustments, but also a place where uh, we're expecting that the, uh, or I've directed that the, well, I, what I would classify before was when we put into capital is now kind of put into operations for operations and supplies, but as you see a, a big jump in, in 2020. Um, Three compared to 2022, the rest of the numbers are pretty much in line with, um, with what inflationary increases would be. Again, uh, Director Davis said, I don't know if you've got any comments on these two slides at all or. Nope, she says no. Well, uh, does, does council have any questions? <laughs> you guys are going to let her off the hook like that? Okay. <laughs> okay. What kind of uh, income do we get out of the dwelling they have a pretty set lease. Uh, I think the amount off the top of my head is that in the other revenue it would section. Be, it would be in the other other revenue section. Yes, and okay. um, I want to say it's thirty five thousand. I think is what their the rent annual rental amount is. And then what? I mean, uh, Director Davidson, you would know better, but maintenance on the curling rink, for example, uh, per year. Sorry, and I missed the first part of Theo McClure's question. Was it? Were you talking about curling, Councillor yeah. Davidson? Yeah, and so. Um, CEO McClure's um, rough estimate is is close. It would be within maybe a thousand dollars of that. And sorry, can you repeat your question? I only caught part of it. I just asked what kind of um, maintenance. I mean, for what we're getting out of it, what's the maintenance on um, the ice surface, for example? That area it has not been quite as problematic. We've had to do some brine repairs and concrete work and a variety of things that kind of serve kind of below the slab work um, over the years. Uh, it has not been our primary focus of kind of the aging infrastructure challenges in that building in the last say year or two. Um, but I'd say the most recent work we did was some repair to concrete and brine lines uh, 
I'm going to say approximately three years ago, but don't quote me on that. And then one more question yes. if possible. Um, and so when you have um, uh, programs that are offered, um, dance or whatever programs are offered through the, the um, I mean, you, to the Aquatic and Leisure Guide, um, then does that revenues then get directed directly to the TMC for what it is? Yeah, so we have a pricing formula. Yeah, so in, in the, the short answer to that would be yes. So there's a portion of funding that when you develop program fees for, um, say, a birthday party that's being held in the Trail Memorial Center, there's a portion of that fee that gets earmarked over to the facility and a portion of that fee that goes to other supplies and needs for that um, service. So it could be equipment, it could be any number of things. So yes, there is a portion and it varies kind of depending on the facility. Just trying to understand how that gets broken down when mm -hmm. someone goes to their group or does something, how does it get allocated to the different um, locations? Yeah, and we build, so when you see the when council gets to review the fees and charges bylaw, you'll see fees associated with, say, a room rental, um, say the McIntyre room in the Trail Memorial Center. And a portion of that fee is earmarked within the fee structure for that service so that there is some revenue coming back in to that space, if that makes sense. And then you're so yes, targeted to the facility that services are in. More questions. That's <laughs> good. Um, uh, just putting my advertising and marketing hat on. Um, so how, where does that fall under your expenses for marketing and advertising for the spaces that are available for lease or rent or? Sorry, are you wondering what we do for for advertising? Well, where, where does, yeah, like advertising and marketing, like where does that get allocated? So it's split up within the department. So there's a portion of advertising and marketing that's within the Trail Aquatic and Leisure Center, a portion that is within the uh, leisure services. So like leases programs and those two cost centers make up the bulk of our, um, where, where monies are allocated to support sort of marketing and promotions for the department. It's a very small number for um, the degree of service that we actually have and is certainly an area that if there was um, resources made available as in staff time um, would certainly be an area that could be enhanced but it's I think the overall budget gosh I'm, I'd be guessing I could look at some numbers for you but I want to say it's in the maybe twenty five to thirty thousand dollar range and if you imagine close to a four million dollar budget it's a very, very small amount of work that we do. Thank you. Okay. Um, and so since we were still sort of on the expenses, because I, I'd like to think, uh, kind of switch gears and go into the document that I sent you that has sort of the general summary and some of the summarized by department. And then we'll go back to just sort of showing you kind of what the tax effect um, not only for, because we have all the numbers now for um, all of the requisitions that we have. So we'll be able to kind of talk about, here's what I'm seeing for our operating budget. There's a couple of questions that it needs council's direction on. And, uh, but then we'll go back into sort of what the effect is um, for the average home in the trail. So if I start with um, this page here, those of you uh, in council that are away, you can see it at the summary page, if we're able to look at it. And I just wanted to speak a bit about um, what's on here right now is the 2022 budget, which, which is under uh, column AN, and then under AP is what we're seeing projected actuals. The audit is very close to being finished, so quite comfortable with where these numbers are at. And I wanted just to um, mm -hmm. you know briefly speak about a few of these things more on the detail side, but looking into um, uh, in particular, one that I was hoping to get some direction from council on is that we've had a very good year and we'll discuss that a bit more on the detail side, but I think it's an opportunity for council uh, under line 44 uh, to take advantage of that surplus and start. The reserve has already been set up, but it has never had any money put into it. And I think that this is something that you've got an opportunity to do. And I think that uh, with your approval, I would like to to make that arrangement, um, with, uh, again, I can do it, but I also need council's, you know, uh, willingness and a nod to do that. 
as far as putting money in each year after that, that's again, a budget conversation. It's something that I think that we should consider because it is a, a liability that we have. But um, one of the things that I was talking about here is being able to handle that with all that's gone on. Uh, again, based on line 41, you can see that I've also got that yellow because the UDC that the line above uh, matches with the $2.8 million that council had already agreed to put towards the capital reserve. And you can see that that had been budgeted to grow each year. Um, and then it's the, again, the fixing of um, previous year's capital surplus that wasn't allocated. That's where that million dollars is going. Um, <clears throat> all the other numbers are basically what was budgeted. The other one that I think was important is that was not budgeted for was that we do get some funds from the climate uh, action and we have a reserve. And uh, based on that, these types of uh, grants that we get from the province uh, should have gone into there. And this was one that I uh, was making sure that we didn't do it. Uh, going forward, I've got it. That's the revenue will be in the top line, but the allocation of the reserve will be there. Uh, we will see if you look at that capital sheet that I provided for uh, the summer, you'll notice that there are a number of projects that we are looking at using that funding for. We won't be using all of it, but it's again, that uh, ability to make sure that uh, based on what council's bylaw says about these funds and that it goes to that location. Um, at the end of the day, you can see after everything, after the dust settles and after making that, that there would be uh, a $24,000, uh, you know, push against the um, surplus. But again, your surplus is at $6 million. So I'm, it's not something that, that I'm at all concerned about. And that's where, again, what I'm looking at is line would be, um, uh, line, I guess, 67 under AP after the allocations and, and what's going on there. Um, we'll go a bit further into, um, you know, uh, the, like a bit more on the summary, but uh, the other things I just want to quickly look at is that currently with where I've got the budget at and what the revenue that we have, you can see that we've got about a $90,000 shortfall. Uh, you will see that there's a couple asks down at the bottom that seem to be a bit more of an anomaly that I don't have in the budget that I could give you some direction on from council. One thing I will point to is that under line 19, what I have eliminated is the use of surplus that we've kind of been sitting there each year. Now, I will probably be, might be one of those places where we say, hey, this year, can you put that money in there? Um, again, reminding ourselves that when you have a budget of this magnitude, that if you're son or daughter came home and said, you know what, I got 99% accurate on my math test. I think that all of us would be very proud of that child. Um, if you're 99% accurate on this budget, that 1% means that you can either be $200,000 uh, over budget or $200,000 under budget. And with everything going on, I think it's a, a common thing to be able to not um, needle or not worry and just kind of see where things land is to it's not something to be afraid of I guess for council to be able to say if I want this balance to be budget and we've got numbers in there to to do that that is an area that uh, council can direct to say yeah let's let's have that come out of previous year surplus you have a healthy surplus so it's not something to be concerned about but there also could be direction from council to say my preference would be that you go back through the budget and you know ask people to reduce to get us down to that to those numbers um, I did want to speak to you under line 95, uh, because we know that it was a while back that council had a, a GOC meeting and we were approached by the incredible um, farmer's market, a great service that uh, great, great uh, events here in intro, uh, that they were wanting, because they were looking at hiring a coordinator, they were going to put some funding towards it, but they also have some funding from uh, local governments. And at the time, council was okay. So Trail is part of this, and we absolutely want to be, I think, helpful and we're interested in the trail market, but we also were interested in what our regional partners were doing, and, and we had recognized that they'd spoke to us the fact that they had gone and, and done a presentation at the RD uh, KB. So out of that, I've been able to have discussions with their uh, deputy director, their deputy, director, their deputy CAO, and uh, part of it was there had been some feedback or resolution coming forward to um, sponsor a much larger project that had to do not only with the funding of the $30,000 ask from the incredible trails market, the farmer's market, but also a ag strategy for the area. I said to the uh, deputy CAO, I said, well, council certainly got the presentation and, and asked good questions uh, at the incredible farmer's market, but we don't know anything about the um, the ag strategy that you have. 
but I know that I'm confident that if I bring it to council, that under the sharing ratio of the thirty thousand um, dollars that we have, and they use the same ratio that they've got for some of the other east side east side seven services, um, that of that thirty thousand dollar ask, ours would be thirteen. But that also means that the rest of the region is putting money into it, which I think was exactly what council was was hoping, and and our regional partners see the value in it, and, and um, they're comfortable. Of, uh, I think with us, but that that's one of the questions that we have. Um, the other one is, uh, you know, your CID. Um, they've asked for a significant uh, increase over last year, not quite thirty percent. Um, they're. Um, uh, I haven't met with them myself. I know that they're passionate about what they do, but we also I also recognize that the ask is large and uh, kind of outside of the normal request and recognizing that council has, this is your budget, you're responsible for these sorts of things and whether or not uh, there's a willingness to go that far, or if it's a case of, we'll give you uh, some funds, but you know maybe you need to try to work towards living in your means, maybe a few more less, less plants or or how that works, but just letting you know, this was one of those big asks that would come in and um, felt it was important to pull out. I do recognize that it would be better to have had this conversation in February or March when the four flowers were kind of going on, but. Uh, it is what it is, and here we are today. So don't need an answer from you guys on that right now, but I do want to say that that based on what we've got going here, um, you can see that we're at about $90,000 deficit uh, in the current year, even at a 4.47 uh, tax increase, and a couple of asks there as well. So that puts us at a you know, 133 is sort of where your pressure point is at. Um, so now I'm going to ask if you can to go into the, the multi-pages, it could be four pages, sort of summary of, uh, of expenses. <laughs> yes, so sorry, yes. Quick question on the old bridge reserve. Yes. Uh, what are we targeting for that and when? Uh, what's our timeline on? Because that's just, I'm assuming that's the demolition of the bridge that we're talking about and saving money for. Well, we need to have some, uh, we don't have any funding. Now, again, we have money in reserve, but... Uh, it needs to be something that we need to, I think, to be putting some money aside. One of the main reasons I believe that you should, and, and what is the right number, we've had kind of fluctuations on numbers. We maybe had some opportunities that someone could have taken care of it before, and that would have been a good idea, but that's, that's water under the bridge, no pun intended. Um, and so uh, going forward here, I if one thing that I've learned is that if you've got some reserve money set aside and then you go to a grant, you can go to apply for a grant with an audit to clean something up, uh, there's also some, uh, my understanding is that there's value in that bridge. Leveraging money. Yeah, exactly. There's leveraging money. So that's one thing. So when you ask me, what is the cost of doing something? If you're able to get grants these days uh, to be able to clean something like that up, um, you know, right now they're usually in that 60, 67% kind of range. Now, uh, the steel on the bridge is value. And so if someone was to come and look at this, that's one of the things that you would be wanting to do. If your steel cost of steel is up, maybe there's more value, there's less cost for someone to come and say, hey, look at, we've got steel here that would be very valuable for someone to salvage. So if you're putting that into the budget on what does it cost to remove, and you've got some money aside to be able to do that, and then someone else is looking at it saying, well, we get to keep the steel if we take it, you know, that's that sort of partnership. I do not have a solid number for you, uh, Councillor mm -hmm. Cashwell. No, that's fair. I appreciate yeah. that explanation. Thank you. And not only the steel on the bridge, though, I heard that the wood on the bridge is very, very valuable. Yeah, it's a special wood that they brought in. And um, yeah, I think it's important. It might be an idea to get that, you know, uh, um, an estimate on the value of the steel and the the decking. Yeah. yeah. It's a great, a great uh, idea, uh, Mayor. And this is again something I should have backed up as well. But just to be clear, that we're at kind of a deadline here to kind of get this, especially because mm -hmm. of the tax rate, right? But the budget is this that it doesn't mean that you are locked in. You are allowed to change it if something came along. What I would say is that if you put some money into the reserve, when someone says to you, "Well, it's going to cost you fifty thousand dollars to be able to um, uh, do a study on it or find out what that's going to cost, get an estimate." You know, at least you've got a, a place now you're pointing at, you're saying, oh, well, we put some money aside here to, to kind of do mm -hmm. that work. So this is another reason, I think, to be able to, to look at doing that. Thank you. And um, I will apologize, too. I, I haven't necessarily been looking at the screen, and mm -hmm. I don't know, Council Butler, or, okay, Council yeah. Benson, if there's been any questions. It's... Okay. 
Uh, so I'm going to start with page one and uh, just some highlights here and a couple of uh, things I wanted to talk about. So this is sort of your, your breakdowns. Uh, the first section here on page one is your general government. So that's, you know, your your finance department, it's your corporate services. Uh, you've got a couple of things like ITs in there. Communication is another one. And then we've got uh, some other smaller um, grants or planning opportunities here as well. Um, again, you can see your council wages where they're sitting, uh, again, on budget and same with the council supplies. I did uh, bump up uh, the... Um, the budget in 2023 was because we seem to have an active council that wants to attend, which I think is great and go to meetings. So travel is there, but I'm also appreciative that in the community be as well is that you're traveling together and really kind of uh, helping take the pressure off some of those travel costs. So I, you know, I thank you for that. And, and um, it helps us uh, allow more people to go to things when we do that. Um, one line here that I've got, and it's, uh, I put it in here, uh, because this was a kind of a consistent with my previous role, is that sometimes I, we would direct council or council wanted to have a bit of a fund that uh, for special projects. So, because during the year you may run into things and if it's not in your budget, then all of a sudden you're back to you like, hey, I want to do this with that. And ideally or normally it would be a place of um, not creating it out of taxation, but more like, hey, we've got a good in our our surplus. So if we want to put $50,000 in here in case something good came along that we wanted to do, we would have that funding available. Uh, so that's just one of those ones. I put that in here because that sometimes was uh, something that mm -hmm. council would direct me to do. So uh, you'll look in, um, again, general admin salaries. Uh, the one thing here is you'll say, well, hey, that one's dropped a bit. And one of the reasons for that is that uh, the general election. So we had a general election, which costs about 20 some odd thousand dollars, which is common. That's every four years. So you'll see that as much as these are increasing in 24, 25, 20 uh, at a, an inflationary type rate that I sort of looked at, um, you'll notice a big jump in 2026. Well, that's next time that we'll have election. So it's and then it drops back down again. So just kind of keeping your eyes on that. Um, communications is there. Uh, finance. So this is one of the ones that uh, at the time, there's a couple things that were going on here with last year's budget. Uh, one of them uh, was the fact that the um, the unknowns of a CAO and a CFO role split and kind of costing out for that. Uh, plus the fact that at the time you were having a new CAO come in and an old CAO kind of still being um, part of the of the, uh, of, of the city. So there is a bit of a, a heavier budget there. You can see that that's all uh, been resolved now in, in 2023. And um, one of the things that I will point out as well, and again, I know that this isn't done yet, but you'll see the budget for supplies and services in uh, 2024 drops significantly. And the reason for that is, is because we have this huge uh, charge that is ongoing with the credit cards people being able to pay their credit cards for their uh, utilities and property taxes and uh, it is a significant cost to the taxpayer and most communities if not all either a don't allow you to pay with a credit card for your um your uh, those those types of uh, charges you know again not going to stop someone on a credit card for a ten dollar parking ticket but when you start talking in the thousands of dollars and people are paying those off and getting the points, those points cards uh, really have a, a, a negative effect on the city. And that's where those expenses go. Most communities uh, want the convenience of allowing someone to be able to not come in here and, and pay or the convenience to the community or to the residents. Uh, but they just like you're seeing all over the place where there's a convenience to be attached to whatever your charge is. So that's certainly really something that I have um not done for this year because we're late on that, but uh, my expectation is we would come to council with a proper bylaw and we would adjust that going forward. And that would be a, a savings and take some pressure off of the city taxpayer. Um, IT, uh, one of the things you'll notice is that the, it's under budget and um, approved last year was uh, some additional salary for a, an additional IT person. Uh, we never, never got there, never hired that person. Um, and so even where we're at today, because it's May and we don't have someone here. So I, I have put um, kind of, again, sort of similar to the last year, a half year for the job and then a full position into the future. So if you're wondering, hey, wait a second, there's a, a jump and then there's a bigger jump in the next year. The idea being that uh, based on what council's direction was uh, in previous years that um, although we didn't do that, there's obviously a savings for that, but there will be a cost going forward. Um, 
the uh, economic development, that's your line 34, that's the contribution that you make to the LCIC here. So I, I know it's different and we used to be inside the, the regional service. And so that'll be something that at the end of 2023, uh, the arrangement uh, will be up for renewal. So again, the question would be, does council want to continue doing it this way or do they want to go back and join uh, with the regional partners on LCIC? How do they feel about that? Again, we've got time for conversations, but that's something that comes to an end and some decision will need to be made in the early year or, or before start of 2024. Um, here was one of the other ones too, I think that was important to discuss is that the community events, supplies and services. So uh, actually, no, I've got that backwards. It should be uh, Mayor Jones that noticed that I made a mistake. Uh, the community grants should be the one that's at 137,000. I think I've got the name switch. I'm not sure where's, which one it has, but um, the community grants is the 137. So you've got a number of different things, whether or not that's facility wave a grant sort of thing at $30,000, and then there's also $80,000, $80,000 dollars for community grants. You can see that in uh, 2022, I think just with uh, some of the challenges and coming out of COVID that there wasn't a lot of funds spent there, but um, that's certainly one that uh, I wanted council to be aware of. Uh, the community event supplies and services, which actually should be the budget number of 70,000, that's where you've got some seniors um, funding, you've got some uh, money for your um, uh, the um, Silver City days. Now, again, that's another area, you know, with uh, Councillor Benson and Councillor Cashel and all the drum of business, but that might be a place where maybe we could, uh, we got some additional grants and revenues coming in. We don't know where the costs it, but that could be a place too that uh, maybe helps us out with uh, some of the other pressure, or maybe we could, um, you know, lower this budget a bit knowing or, or increase it by revenue, which actually might help us on um, trying to fund some of these other ones that were on the other page there. Just some thoughts. So another one here that, that's new that I've been doing since the last couple of years of doing the year end is um, an allocation of wages uh, and some supplies to the utilities. One of the things that I thought was quite unique was that there was no allocation of council, uh, corporate officers, finance, IT, uh, the audit, those sorts of costs being charged out to uh, the water and sewer utilities. Again, we go through all the budget process for them. Um, it's not like it's a huge percentage, but when you look at the salaries and they add up, you know, even having a four or five percent of those wages, it, it starts to add up. Um, and this is one of those things that's taken some pressure off. You'll notice, well, well, why was general government under budget this year? Well, that's one of the main reasons. Most of the things are pretty much in line. Uh, and I because we've got kind of less salaries and some less expenses going forward, last couple of years have been a bit higher. Um, that's a drop. Uh, we, there's less being requested in the future years, but it is an area that allows us, I think, to um, to fund some of the things that before maybe been, but were taken out of surplus or how we would like to. I don't know if anyone has any questions on the uh, on the general side. I do. Oh, um, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, could you talk about line 33, the planning and community development? What does that look like? You know, it's been an interesting um, budget. Uh, I noticed a few items in there, and I'm sorry, I'm not 100% sure kind okay. of what that process for. Certainly was one of the ones that there's some planning advertising budget is in there, and there's also some funds that are set aside. And, and um, I, I have to believe, or thinking, again, I haven't had a lot of um, understanding from finance side to kind of know all of the ins and outs and all the numbers, okay. but I believe it could be a place where uh, OCP, Kind of, uh, you know, kind of cost was maybe budgeted in there. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, line 19, what does it mean in this? Uh, so, your, um, the, the exempt being is when you're excluded, you're excluded staff. Okay. Right. So, so sometimes. Not, not QB. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And uh, actually, it's a good point because I, I think actually in there, I didn't have time, but there is um, QB in there. Uh, they're in that number right now. But next year, when I'm better, it will have a break and it'll say finance salaries exempt, finance salaries uh, QB. Or, okay. Yeah. So good catch. Thank yes. <laughs> okay. Not seeing any other questions from the screen and or from anyone else. I'm going to move on to protective services. Let's see the next page, page two. Again, um, you'll notice, and not to anyone's surprise, but uh, this one is under budget. But we know that uh, the RCMP has had a huge struggle on 
members, and we know that uh, in talking with the minister and we got to UCM and uh, even starting with Sergeant Vasilovich, there's uh, a lot of support wanting to come, but we know that there's lots of asks as well. Uh, but I know that he's been working hard, Sergeant Vasilovich, on uh, getting this uh, to a place where he's getting some individuals back to work. And so the hope is that uh, we'll be uh, getting into a healthier spot, but you can see the effect. So if you're supposed to have 14 members, but you only have 10, say, for example, or 11 or 12, um, that cost per member, the city doesn't bear that. Now, again, they don't, maybe don't bear the bear the cost of it financially this way, but you're likely seeing some of the cost on, you know, what policing isn't able to do in our community. So there is a cost, so don't kid ourselves, but financially, uh, when they send us the invoice, very difficult to charge us for 14 people, only 11 of the more things. Yeah. Yes. Um, as our neighbors uh, population increase i understand it's based on population when they have to start on protective services yes and as our neighbors population increase does that change our amount that we have to pay i would say it, it could there could be some economies just yet that's okay. the one thing that i will say is is that the city of trail gets the benefit of sort of being the hub we've got rcmp you know the station is here yeah. even if they're going to trail they're going to be driving through maybe they're I'm sorry if they're up in rosalind or other places um they're coming back you know they're sort of policing even if they're you know helping out the other communities so yeah. there's some of those benefits one of the things that can happen or there tends to be uh, more of a hit to the community that hits that five thousand threshold or you know that starts yeah. to have to pay whatever ratio it is yeah. hurts them more um now again as the population does grow they do have a calculation so that if it means that if you are supposed to have uh, 18 members here but then you go over a certain area threshold of population well, well now we need 19. so that can sometimes be one of those pressures but but the fact that you've got a, a sergeant, you've got a, a detachment, and you've got vehicles here, you know, adding another uh, officer, it's more the cost of the community that didn't have to pay anything. Yeah. Uh, we only had to pay some police tax, but now being responsible for a 30% or, or a cost share, and that, that's where things start to get expensive. Uh, yeah. and, and, and more for the um, other community, community, not so Yeah, police. no, I was wondering if it would offset our Oh, and, and again, it I don't think it would no. per se. I think that they just they add up, members. Well, it could add members, or it's just that um the billing would go out instead of the province eating it, they would just get the community to pay more right. for the okay. area. Yeah. Um yes, Council Control. While we're on uh protective services, but the federal government it was announced in March that the federal government will not cover any portion of retroactive salary. Yeah. Cost owed to the RCMP because of the collective agreement that's going back to 2017. And the local governments, I guess, would be given a two year uh, opportunity to make full payment. Just wondering, is that uh, accounted for in this, uh, in this spreadsheet that we're looking at? It has already been accounted for. So, the one thing that the good news sort of is, is that uh, we were slightly higher. Uh, what we accrue. And again, remembering that this has been going on for five years. So each year you're sort of accruing. And then in the current year, they find the gate to the settlement. Here's what the number is. So the, that's very helpful. Instead of just like, well, you don't know what the number is. Now it was like, here's what your number is, City of Trail. And we were slightly higher. So we've adjusted to that. But that payable is sitting on the balance sheet. So again, all those years. So like in 2018, for example, if it was supposed to be 3% higher, we would expense that. In 2018, we would have set up the payable. Then we would have taken 2019, added 2018 to 2019, put that on as a payable, expensed it, and same thing until we get to 2022. And now we know what that final balance is. So now there's a finality. Um, I certainly did take the federal government up on their offer of paying this off over two years. Um, and so that's what we will, we will do. So um, other than it going forward, Councillor Cashel, on what the new rate is and what the negotiated union wage is for the contract, uh, there will just still be a payable because the previous years, that's where the expense was. And so going forward, you shouldn't have to pay them anymore. Uh, as it gets paid down, it, it, would, it would disappear. That makes, uh, hopefully, I'm, I said that was clear. Maybe, maybe not. Somewhat, yes. Okay. Um, and then I'm just looking ahead further years. The, the salary increases don't seem to be that much greater than what they are current, even though I know that they're getting, and deservedly so, yeah. so some substantial salary increases. Yeah. So are you budgeting for that in this? Uh... Uh, great point and good eye, good eye. So a couple of things. One uh, things that I've done is I've had an increase, but not at the level 
that it probably is projected to be part of that is because my expectation is, is that they won't have a full complement of staff. Fair enough. So again, rather than create a pressure for adding more taxation, uh, only to have it kind of end up as a surplus, I've, um, I've not a complete, but just a, a bit of an adjustment. Thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to uh, public works. <laughs> And again, too, you can see all the different groups there. Uh, just a couple of things I want. What's your one of the I told you guys. No, no, I, I, I guess it does fall under protective service. The bylaw yes. enforcement salary benefits, yes, forty-eight thousand seven hundred five. Yes. It just struck me as being very low. I'm just wondering if you can give us yeah. an explanation for that. Actually, and again, great point. Um, so the. Uh, you'll find it in many places, uh, much like we talked about before, where right now I've got this um, kind of credit sitting in the general government to start allocating people's salaries out but that's because we haven't set it up in the system the way that i think it should be so in the same way that uh you've got a, a bylaw officer they'll be doing bylaw because you'll notice down lower there's bylaw for parking that sort of a number yeah. but then you've also got bylaw enforcement so what's happening is that you've got an allocation so i might work 50 so for even for me i would work 50 percent kind of corporate or 60 percent corporate officer and 40 percent um finance so you'll see my salary split so basically the long answer on all that is that it's a splitting of the of the cost of the bylaw officer between different departments in the city yeah thank you um again public works we know all that they do uh, again, most things were in line, except that uh, not to a surprise, I'm sure to many, but uh, snow removal uh, was a uh, it was a big year, yeah. and um, a lot of equipment, a lot of downtown clearing. So a lot of times, you know, if you've got the staff that are already there, that's usually not your problem because you've already you know you got to keep the staff there. 7. It's when you hit the threshold and you got to bring the grader down here. You got to bring the guys in overnight. You got to start loading up the loaders and you start paying the contractors to start hauling it away. When you start paying for the snow hauling, that's what really jacks your, your budget. And 2022 was a big year, uh, biggest year uh, for most uh, budgets. And again, it's sort of interesting because it all kind of came right in the uh, first week of January. And then it was pretty dry for a while. But that first week of January, now I know we're going back uh like 18 months sort of thing almost or but that was a huge dump and it really had a big big effect but what usually happens is that even if you've got that snow uh you're kind of you know at the end of you know not so much snow in february march but usually you get around to december before it really starts snowing again and this year it happened in november and it kept happening in fact we had i think a record number of having to clear the downtown in end of november and december and uh, so that was the big factor for, for the cost for us on that. And the other thing that you'll notice is that twofold. One is, is that if you've got a big snow year, you'll notice other areas don't get touched whether or not that storm sewer or sanitation or in the same boat, if we got a light snow year, you'll start to see things like, hey, they're working in parks and they're doing other work because, again, there can be a shifting because you get the same guys that are going to do the work at the Trail Memorial Center, but they're also the same guys that are going to be driving the plow truck when uh, you know, it's stone to beat the band sort of thing. So it's one of those things. The, the real cost that you end up on is fuel, fuel in particular, driving those big machineries, equipment charge out if you're using the equipment a lot. Uh, and again, the big cost is outside of it is the, uh, the use of contractors that try to reduce them. Um, again, uh, looking at this budget here, a couple of things have happened. And uh, again, a big jump. You Overall, the increases, uh, the directors worked on keeping it pretty tight, but we did have a big jump and you sort of see that in the... Um, uh, the line painting line, which I think is your public, uh, kind of the operational, you see, went from 970 to 1.189 million. That's uh, row uh, 75. And also, what's in there is a jump in the uh, what I kind of classified same as what happened at the Trail Memorial Center and the Aquatic Center is uh, increasing over before as we sort of been sitting at a capital budget or capital budgets, capital funding, we just kind of put those operation capitals right into the, the budget of the public works department. Okay, um, I'm going to go to page three. So uh, that's where we started talking about garbage, where uh, currently uh, the city uh, contracts that out, and you can see that that's where we've got an inflationary on our contract going forward, uh, and as well tipping fees um, in line there. Uh, we, we've been um, pretty close to what budget is. I also know that uh, the city itself last year in December had to help out the uh, contractor. So that's like a reason why, uh, we, you know, again, there's some costs that we got recovered from being able to help them out with their contract. On cemetery, um, there, you know, 
a little bit less this year than uh, what was budgeted. One of the main factors has been getting students. Uh, we're noticing that even with the jump in, um, what would be the uh, the jump in minimum wage coming here in June uh, is very close to what we would be paying to come and work in the city as a student. And so sometimes that's a place where you, you get better wages than other locations and sometimes we're not as attractive as we used to be so that's that's something that um uh, i think we'll we'll be looking into the future but uh, also understanding that there's a a knock-on effect of increasing anytime we increase rates inside that collective agreement there's usually a, a non-profit effect with other areas as well uh we've kind of talked a bit here on um this whole the, the trail community and the, the aquatic center MC, the rec programming, rec programming, I kind of broke that out. That would be your person that's doing your aqua fit, uh, doing your uh, aerobics and things like that. So you tend to have some salaries and then you've also got some supplies. Uh, as they go up, uh, we seem to be in line last year, but you might find um, more expense, but that would also uh, would relate to more revenues. So that's one thing that's always good. Uh, field house, again, kind of in line there. Uh, again, we talked about the parks itself. And I, I believe that there's some, again, direct correlations when you look at the parks, the line 136 and 137 uh, being lower than what, uh, or at least the um, cheap salaries was lower than was, what was charged, part of that being a fact that in scope on, right? Uh, then just skipping over here for page four, um, again, kind of seeing that one is that line, we do have a single line out uh, for the cost of your uh, communities in blue. And uh, again, they were over budget slightly, and I've got an inflationary uh, increase in there. And then, of course, they've asked me for additional fundings. They were hoping for a budget of 140 in 2023. Um, other things there, just kind of noting your campground and uh, the riverfront. And, um, and then just again, we discussed earlier was the airport. So again, this is a, a summary, but sort of again, trying to break out the, the wages and the supplies and services. Um, there's one thing that uh, has been hugely trialing for me is that the way that uh, we are built in our general ledger and how we charge currently is that you will have one account. Uh, in that account, we will charge supplies and services, wages, equipment. And so it's very difficult to get a snapshot on how did we do uh, for wages to budget sort of thing. So that's uh, something I really want to commit to. You. Uh, not something you can do during the year, but if you're going to do and set up a new account and have a payroll go to an account that's called wages for these things, you need to do it on January 1st. So uh, a goal of mine uh, is to is to allow that to happen because right now I have to go into the GL and then I've got to run two or three other GL numbers to look at the account find out what the payroll is, separate from payroll what equipment charges are in payroll to, to break that out. And it's just really unnecessary. It's, it's not something I've seen before, um, but it's again, a, a goal I think that will allow, uh, I, I applaud the managers of being able to try to figure out their budgets because uh, how can we tell whether or not you're over with labor over with equipment, it's, 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 it's crazy. It's very, very difficult. So that's a commitment that um, I think is gonna be important to, to do, uh, which I think will help us on our, our monthly and quarterly, you know, quarterly for council, but monthly sort of results allowing um, staff to be able to understand. Now, again, that's not for all departments, just to be clear. And the reason that it's there, is sometimes a convenience. If you want to look at the corporate officer and the CAOs and the finance salaries, that's all that's in there. But if you're looking at any public works accounts or any of the Trail Memorial Center, most of those have a blend of whatever's in there is a, is a combination of a bunch of expenses. And so, I, I mean, again, I'm just repeating myself, but that goal will be is that we'll try to break that out. Um, and once we start doing that, I think it'll be a lot easier to do some comparisons and, and also be able to very quickly find out and have an explanation because if it's a case of, hey, this was high, well, why? Well, because we had flooding that uh, year and it really spiked and it was a lot of wages and a lot of equipment. And that's the reason why. Right now, when you look at it, it's you got to do that extra dig. And I think that we can help ourselves by breaking that out. And it's not difficult to do because once the payroll is set up with the account, it just posts there. Right? It's not anything. So, um, so quick question. Yes. Are we um, opening up the campground again this year? Yes, we are. Okay. We, yeah. Um, Today would have been today, I think. I don't, yeah. Oh, opening, day. opening day. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I know there's been uh, people who've been uh, fielding calls because the the contractor doesn't start until May first. So mm. of course, everyone kind of wanting to get in there. I don't know how full we are. I don't know, uh, Director Day. Um, the guys that give you one person, and one trailer today. Okay, there's okay. lots of room if you want to take a staycation. <laughs> okay, good to know. The good schedule does pick up. Yeah. What kind of uh, revenues do we get out of that? I I know that. <laughs> um, can I get you back to you on yes. that number? Yeah, yeah no, I just maybe when we take a break, I'll take a look here. Yeah, no, just um, so again, that's a kind of high level. Um, I think I tried to explain sort of where I've kind of got the numbers flowing and why they've changed. Yes, cancer cash roll. Yeah, while we were protective oh. services, I did have one other question. Yes. Uh, line 53 police building expenses, yes, uh, $101,905. Now, is that fair? Is that our fair, or does the our, our neighboring municipalities do they have a hand in paying some of that? Um, there are some items that are recoverable, and, and again, uh, the cost of the building itself, so some of the heat and hydro and those sorts of things, we do go and send them an invoice on. Uh, there's and there's a sharing of funding comes back, so it's a great question. There is a revenue line as well that sits inside um, uh, the um, the other revenue from other services. Thank you. Yes. But the city owns that building. Yes. 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 Built and and the debt's going to come off in a, in a couple of years. Um, but yeah. Um. Okay. I don't know if anyone uh, has any questions on this particular document right now. Um, um, yes, there was you highlighted library grant hmm. in the 2023 budget, but it's highlighted Thank you. yellow. Is there a reason? Yes, there was. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I try to do things like I'm not that sharp right now, as you guys know. <laughs> um, so, so I try to do things like this to help myself. Remember. Yes. Um, and I, I didn't do it for right now because I just haven't had the time. But um, as I met with the library board, uh, one of the things that I noticed or what I'm seeing. Uh, is a factor of, of we don't have any of the operational costs for the library uh, being accounted for. So when I say that, meaning they're in the building, they are you know let's say a fifty percent tenant, but there's no charges that go you know even at, even as a right now my thought process it was that I as we work through these things sometimes it can be uncomfortable because it's not like they're a big revenue generating entity but more of an accounting for the library itself what's the true cost of running the library well we know right now that they're understated in my opinion because they don't pay any cost of a rent or a portion of heat and hydro some of the it some of those things so as much as we um i think that the grant could be likely be higher in the same time that we may charge them some expenses. So it would be sort of a, maybe a netting, you know, there would be a netting effect, but also I think a recognition that um, that the grant might go up, but then we would get some recovery as well. So what the base grant is, is, is mostly to be able to cover what we've been ongoing and doing, which is wages and long times. Uh, but it would be an ability for the library to also look and say like, hey, if we compare to others that are in their own building, maybe own their own building, that would be responsible for either paying a rent or a lease, or would be responsible for insurance and heat and hydro, et cetera. And that's not in there uh, for, for ours. Uh, one of the things that was a positive um, that we will be able to do some recovery on is that we had a minor amount. I wanna say it's been $175 a month that we um, receive from them to do their accounting. Um, and that is not a lot of money for the work that gets done. But uh, we've changed the process with our auditors this year. And instead of um, doing a single audit itself just for the library, uh, we're doing an audit for the entire operations, which is consolidated with the library being audited inside the bigger numbers. But that means that instead of having an audit, which is very expensive just for the library, uh, that cost, uh, our overall cost is dropping quite significantly. When you think of the two audits that we were paying for, now we're paying for one and it's lower, quite a bit lower than what we were paying for two. And so I'm hoping to use some of that as uh, an ability to recover for some of the finance support that we do. So they would be kind of net full, but we would be getting, um, still paying for some costs for accounting, uh, but that would come directly to us instead of to the, uh, yeah, to the, the auditing work. So again, one of those synergies of, uh, of I, I, you know, that's certainly the way that we do it in, in Nelson. Uh, we make sure that it's not the consolidated numbers and that's totally acceptable with the province field level. So anytime you could cut down on audit fees, I'm a big fan. That's a good thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, those accountants are bad. Okay. 
Um, again, uh, on the screen, I don't know uh, if anyone has any questions. Hopefully, I haven't put you guys to sleep. Um, right now, I, I guess a couple of things. I'm hoping for some direction on basically three things. Or actually, I should say four. Uh, one would be, are you comfortable with my recommendation of the 4.47% uh, tax increase? Are you okay, or can I get uh, some direction on taking uh, a benefit of this year's uh, positive numbers um, and savings to put a one-time stamp into the uh, bridge reserve? And then again, I guess there's more than one question. The bridge reserve and what do you think about an ongoing commitment? Uh, and then the final question would be, uh, how do you want to handle this sort of, we're slightly, you know, it's such a small amount, like we're at a, not quite half of a, a, a taxation percent. So we could go to a 4.97 sort of thing for taxes. And then that would eliminate basically uh, some of these costs. Um, or we could say, hey, we could use some surplus and, and, uh, and kind of be comfortable where we're at. And again, understanding that as we go through the year, there's always going to be some revenues up, revenues down, uh, expenses up, expenses down. And, and again, when we come on the wash, it's quite possible that we have a surplus even next year as well. Oh, I got Councillor Butler has his hand up. Oh, okay. Um, Mr. McClure, just on the uh, old bridge, what was your rationale for putting three hundred thousand this year and then a hundred, hundred, hundred? Would it be would it be uh, prudent maybe of us to one hundred this year and followed by a hundred? I, I I am very supportive of uh, the rationale for 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 putting money aside for the bridge, especially when it comes to insurance or liability issues that we might f face down the road for it. So, um, um, but just sort of wondering if that's an area of offset or savings that we could look at. Yeah, and and well, um, you you could. I mean, the rationale for me was uh, was an opportunity because yeah. we because you know if we because if you, if you don't do that, then you end up putting another um, say two hundred thousand. We only put out you put two hundred thousand dollars into your general surplus, which is already at a you know a fairly good number. So uh, and I thought it was an opportunity, and I think it also shows to the community that council is committed, um, you know, to to going forward. That just that was just my thought process. Mm -hmm. And if I could comment on that, um, previous council did make a commitment to starting that reserve. Um, and I think it's important that we carry on with it because uh, if we had that reserve sitting there, we apply for grants and anything to help demolish with the cost of demolishing it and that it shows that we are serious about our commitment to it. So I, I would like to see it um, continue for sure. Um, and I think that, um, you know, I don't know how much it would change if we went to the 100,000 and not have the 300,000 in there, right? So I'm comfortable staying with the 300,000 and then follow the, the, um, the next four years, I guess, with the 100,000. So do we need to make, excuse me, I make a motion to move these things forward, Mr. McClellan? Um, I would say to you, if I could get a motion uh, for the three hundred thousand dollars this year because it's not in the budget, I have to go to the auditors. The auditors are going to say, "Well, what are you doing?" And and I could say, "Well, council gave me the right. You know, I got permission from council to make that. That's that's the one for me." That uh, I would make that motion uh, that we put three hundred thousand based on your recommendations because we do have that extra money right now into that reserve. I second that. Okay. Any other uh, comments or questions about that? Anybody, I don't see anybody online that has anything. Okay. So it has been seconded. Do we want to make the, all those in favor? Okay. Yeah. Carried unanimously. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank you, Council. Questions? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm looking at our 2023 budget. Does this encompass any grants that are we are expecting or any additional grants that we could be receiving? I just never like being in the negative. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and I appreciate that. Um, so up under you know, number one, 
uh, and it's a great point, actually, and I kind of forgot. Uh, another reason why we are over um, is that under grants, unconditional, so that would be your small community grant and you get money from your traffic line sharing ratio. Um, you'll notice that it was higher than what was budgeted. And that's under um, row 13, uh, AN and AP. So the budget was 565. You can see that, um, that 560 is what I've carried forward because it's from the province. So you actually never know what you're going to get each year. But last year, they did give us a top up of $125,000. So that's what's, but it, again, it's so unknown. And that's, I mean, I could plunk in a number, like I said, to, to put some revenue in. And it's quite possible that we do get a grant. Right. I have what I have right now in those grants are basically the ones that we know. So we get some um, keep a prisoner money that we get in there for grant revenue. We also get grant revenue that comes in from the um, RDKB to do the cemetery operations. So those are the numbers that are in there. So they're pretty solid, consistent sort of thing. So that's one thing that I, I do there. And, and I appreciate, uh, Councillor Hanson, on thinking about it, but in the same boat, uh, again, just to be not how do you guys squirm of these? You're ninety nine percent. Well, exactly, yeah. right. So that's just one of those questions. Uh, I Paul, Council Martin. Uh, just the uh, growing communities grant. Yes, that will be discussed at the draft planning. I'm assuming. In exactly. So I just months. didn't want to put it in and just say, hey, you know, I'll go. So it's not even it's, allocated in it's, here. It's not in here at all. Oh. Right? So again, when I put the whole thing together. It will be part of that. It'll be and basically that, that has to be used by the end of the year, correct? It does not. RDG, it does not. RDs, uh, the RDs have to have a plan. Okay. Yes, we so do not. Doesn't yes, oh. we have some. Uh, we have some ability flexibility on that. Yeah, yeah. It, it was quite interesting um, that they kind of put that uh, caveat onto the RDs that they need to have a plan for how it's going to be spent by December um, okay. of 2023. Thank you. Yeah. A uh, question: yes. Do we need to make a motion on the tax increase rate at this meeting, or I, does that go? How do we move that forward? Well, I guess for me, um, I just would hate to come back here because we're basically a week away, uh, and for my next council meeting, where I got to bring your tax rate bylaw. So if you guys decide that you don't want four point forty seven, I'm going to keep the trouble kind of thing because <laughs> I've got only a couple days to fix that. So more of it for me was if there was. Uh, you know, just a straw poll from the group of like, yeah, I'm comfortable with that number, or maybe you want to make it, you know, for Councillor Hanson who feels comfortable saying, well, I want to make it 4.75 and then basically kind of, you know, get closer on the gap on, on revenues. Those are kind of that option that you have right now. But um, if you're saying this is comfortable and as council, if you're comfortable with that uh, type of tax increase, like I said, on $20 million, trying to find some of the is, is, is minimal, right? So I'm not worried about it. I just I mean, now knowing that that additional um, growing community fund isn't even allocated in here. Well, and again, when I say allocated, but you would want to put that to a project, so yeah. it, it will get spent. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Are you comfortable with the increase? Uh, you know, I am. Um, yeah. and we've done a lot of things here, uh, and again, as uh, Mr. Cashwell noted, I've, I've done a, a bit of um, play on. On things and so we could have put the full amounts in for kind of our CMP, but then I'd be looking for more money, and so I kind of work with some of that. We've also moved some uh, capital uh, operating expenses into the into the groups here, so I think that's going to help us going forward being um, more com comfortable with what we what we've got. And like I said, it, it's such a uh, like that's like I said, uh, it's a point five hundred percent either way, maybe like ninety nine point five percent. So. Again, I'm comfortable on those. The one other two pieces, just that where are you, where's council at for you know, supporting the, the farmer's market? And then just the other one was with the, the CIB funding increase. So those are just the, again, the last little niggly pieces for the council. Okay. And the other part too, is that when I come back uh, mm -hmm. on Monday, it will look different in the sense that all of the different compartments will all be in one document. So if you're looking at it going, what's going on? But you're going to see, okay, so here's my taxation revenue, but here's my sewer water revenues. Uh, then it's going to have the sewer water expenses. And so all, it'll all make sense, but it'll all come to come together. So you kind of get it in compartments and then we'll put it together. Um, the other component here is that I make sure that the, the debt levy matches what debt uh, we owe each year. So on taxation. So that's another thing that we didn't talk about that just was important for uh, for.
Well, I mean, uh, if I could go over, um, we go any further, I just want to recognize that um, I think we've done a really good job here. Um, last Monday at the council meeting, we heard from Public Works and the good work they're going to be doing for infrastructure and um, making sure that our roads are safe. And um, we heard tonight from the airport. I mean, everything uh, that we're working towards is, you know, for our citizens and making the community safe. And um, I think it's important to recognize that. Um, I want to recognize that I know that you've spent a lot of time on this budget. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, a, it, to me, it looks like a very responsible budget. Unfortunately, it's going to be hard to balance between um, so many things going on, uh, you know, in the community, all the expenses that have come up with wages and supplies and all of that. It's going to be really difficult for us to balance or, you know, have a budget that, you um, really goes any less than the point point the four point four percent that you're looking at. So um I don't know where we would take off and you know move things around. Uh I think it's been presented very well. Um, yeah. I yeah looking through the budget and spending all the time that we have on it. I to me I just you know I think we're one of the luckier communities because it is 4.47%, right? Unless there's something comes up where you can get it any lower. But, you know, we've had good years previously where we've had a low percentage. And, you know, um, when you think about it, uh, this isn't, you know, no one likes to see a tax increase, but you've got to think about your services. Well, and, and maybe if I can just let you guys think about this and let me get into some of the other effects, because I think that this is an important part. Like we're just talking about ourselves, and, and the problem with it is that we aren't just ourselves. When that tax notice goes out, mm -hmm. yes, it has City of Trail on top of it, but I think it's important because one of the challenges you can face is you work so hard here and you try to do the best you can, but then you get a school tax increase, or you're seeing a tax shifting because of what's happening in the community, uh, you know, because of uh, of rates. And so, if we go through the next few slides here, uh, I think that that will also speak to, um, you know, where I think that the city is is quite reasonable where we're at, and also just remember it is a budget. And you're making your best estimate on what you think is going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, you know, uh, I'm a, you know, in my role, and as we get things set up here, we'll be monitoring this and asking the questions. Uh, we'll, we'll be doing a, a, a second quarter. Or part of my process will be coming to council uh, probably in early August and uh, early October. Sort of like here's where we're at halfway through the year. Here's where we're at three quarters away through the year. There's going to be some good news stories. There's going to be some bad news stories, but it's just keeping you up to date on, on what's happening here. Uh, the one thing that, again, I will say that uh, should give you confidence is that if you look through these numbers, there's explanations as to why some are under and some are over. Mm -hmm. uh, but in most cases, you're in line with what, yeah. uh, you know, what was there. Uh, so it wasn't a case of, you know, the thing was completely blown out of the water as far as being over budget. Or not getting the revenues that you expect, and so that again gives me confidence that uh, you know staff are doing the work. They know how to do it. They're monitoring the budgets, and and some of them are. Hey, if something breaks down at the at the Trail Aquatic Center, or, or if the you know you get a a, a main break or something happen, you got to react to it because there's just no no way around it. So I'm just going to move to the slides again. Oh, I guess I'll just okay. so we'll pick up. I I thought it was important. Um, because there's been some major effects uh, in trail. Uh, positive that your housing residential has gone up, you know, it recognizes what's people finding a beautiful area, housing that's affordable, people coming here, but that has had its downside for tax allocations. Um, you can see in 2023, 20, uh, we're actually, um, again, up 17%. Uh, when you think about last year where we were up uh, 30 some odd percent, uh, pretty much 50% increase in two years. I look at a 100% increase basically over four on the average uh, single bedroom door. And uh, that is that is a lot. And again, we'll go through a few things here and, and we'll, we'll, we'll see that. I don't know why that's there. 
Okay, uh, so again, here wanted to point out like I said, 17 and here was 31% in, in 2022. So that's just kind of getting me where those numbers come from. Uh, council has seen this slide before, but I, I thought sometimes the, the hockey stick uh, analogy here, especially when you look at the comparison to the other classes here, your class one is your residential, class two is utilities, class four is heavy industry, class five is light industry, class six is your business, class seven is your managed forest, and class eight is your non for profit recreation properties. Anyway, you can see everyone else has stayed pretty, pretty in line, and, uh, and housing has gone up. And that's from 2008. So you can see not much was going on there for a while. And in fact, after, you know, basically uh, you know, double uh, what the assessed value relationship is with, the, with, the res with residential. So now that I've got the numbers from all of the entities, I thought that this was important because uh, in looking at the increase at the 4.47 for the average single family dwelling home, which is now at 387,000. Uh, it was about 332 uh, a year ago. And uh, I've got that rounded up to about 4.5% increase and it's about $45 on your home. Um, again, we're, we're less than $4 a month, just to know you think about that. But then you see the RDKB and you see what's happening with the hospital. And then in particular for me, I was a bit surprised with the school tax. And so with the province that comes from them, uh, one thing that is very interesting on school tax is that it's broken up into two different components. <clears throat> one component is that uh, all the residentials pay into what would be your school district 20. So if you're a resident, that's where your taxes are accounted for. So they find out what funding they need for that particular school district. And then they divvy it up between the communities that are in that district. So you've got an average of 17% Again, remember, it's the same sort of pie situation. So if Montrose only goes up 5%, but I don't, I don't know the number, I'm just saying to you just hypothetically, if somebody goes up higher, like we've got up 17%, well, then the tax shifting comes to those communities, much like we'll see as we have with RDKB and uh, Cooley Boundary. But you can see that uh, it's an 11% increase over last year. Um, and I got just a little note there just saying that with residential assessed value is going up by an average of 17% in 2023. Um, much like in 2022, we've had some pretty major tax shifting uh, from mostly from the major industry because of the size of their assessed values and the rates that they're at. The effect over 2023 is not lost in the sense that when you get your tax bill, you can see that the city of Trail only makes up 41% of that. Uh, 26 and a half for school, 29 for RDKB, BCAA is pretty minor, and then the hospital. Uh, last year, the city of Trail was at 43%. Well, I can tell you that in basically in a year, uh, two percentage points uh, changed in, in what that tax bill is being made up of. That is the size of the increases that are coming uh, from this tax shifting. Okay. Um, here's just, again, wanted to point out in particular, you'll see, this is the, um, 20, uh, 2023 RDKB, and you can see up on the top, so RDKB, RD, oh my goodness, man. <laughs> didn't fix this slide, man, um, 2023 is at 4.9, 2022, it's 4.7, the difference is 200,000. But you'll notice that residential is actually going up by 225. But not only are they covering actual increase, they're actually getting more. And you can see that heavy industry is, is dropping by 47,000 their allocation is from year over year. Again, uh, 2022 compared to 2021, the increase was only $66,000 in the tax requisition that came from the RDKB. But residential picked up $274,000. Uh, obviously, with utilities and heavy industry, uh, having that tax shift go over to, um, over to residential. So again, it's always hard when you're at this table working hard to try to be the best stewards of what's happening. And this is no fault. I mean, again, if anyone took, said to me, hey, it's a 1.43% increase in the RDKB tax requisition, 
that's pretty, pretty, pretty reasonable. It's just that they don't have the ability to change the multipliers to make the sharing ratio as much that you do, what, is what we do at the uh, municipality level, all municipalities, to make sure that the tax ratio stays the same. If they, if they want to, they have the ability to change it. Here, you can see that just because the multipliers stay the same year after year, have for 20 years, that uh, this is where this tax shift comes along. So that's a, that's a, you know, again, a reason why you might get a call when we send out the tax notices and they say, I heard Mayor Jones say, we've got a 4.47 tax increase and my taxes went up 13%. And it's like, well, actually, it's not because of, you know, your taxes really have gone up if your home is in that average increase. That's the other thing and also is very important to notice. If the average increase to a residential home is 17%, and your house went up 25%, you are going to get more taxes. If your house went up 10%, which is still an increase, you're actually gonna pay lower taxes uh, based on that allocation of the shifting of, of taxation. Uh, anyway, I just thought it's good for the community and to get prepared for the phone calls that are coming in. Now, uh, when you're in the coffee shop and someone says, you know, hey, counselor, what's going on with taxes? I just got my tax numbers. You can say, well, if you compare what happened with your, because uh, like on the list, we do list out, as, you know, it does come with one name on it, City of Trail, but it does break down what portion is for, you know, the hospital or for the, the, uh, for the regional district and school. And I just thought this was important. Again, one of those uh, visuals for me that you can see now, based on the RDKB tax allocation, a residential is picking up 50% of that tab, and that's at 4.9 million. And in uh, 2021, so that's four years ago, which again goes back to, um, you know, basically a time when we doubled our housing values, basically, not, not quite there, but we're at 4659, so not much of a difference, 3,000, but you can see that uh, residential is only at 42, so we picked up 8% of the cost of that uh, for, for plus a million dollars. So, um, those were, again, just, uh, important key things that as I go back in particular, I think that this slide is the probably the most important for, for council is just looking at uh, what is happening with taxation and the goal of being good stewards of the tax dollars we get. The other thing I will speak to is that it's a positive thing to be entrepreneurial like the city of trail is when you've got an airport and you've got different amenities, but they also come at a cost when you get something like a pandemic because when all of a sudden that revenue doesn't come in, the expenses don't go away. In most cases, yeah, you might have stayed some money on heat and hydro, but usually the employees and those sorts of things uh, are still in play and um, you know, paying the add on the airport or whatever is going on, even if um, you're not having passengers. So it's great to see that we're coming up to the side and that is again, one of the factors that is, is uh, helping us with, um, with not having uh, a higher tax increase that we're seeing in some of the other areas. But each year is different, so again, we you know we don't know what twenty twenty four will bring us. So uh, again, at the end of the day, on an average home, your taxes uh, are going up. Uh, we'll be going based on this one hundred eighty nine dollars, which again is going to be not quite um, fifteen dollars. Uh, well, not yeah, fifteen dollars per per month, basically. or 12 percent over the previous year which again we can see where those are where those numbers are coming from so um again i'm kind of back here to uh, what is council's desire on you know, a couple of things um, are you comfortable with the tax rate do i just <clears throat> plug in a number for you know, using surplus to kind of get uh, us in this budget kind of wrapped up for this year and, and um, or do you want to have me come back or just ask me what I can kind of figure it out and I'll go back to the department heads and say, hey, we got to uh, look for some fun. Yeah, <clears throat> what was the increase last year? Uh, why am I? Remember? Yeah, it was before my time. Um, I thought it was 4.7 or 4.8 or something like that. Yes, that's right. I mean, you can't necessarily plan for 
you know, massive natural disasters, right? I mean, when that retaining wall went right in Daniel Street, I mean, that's, I mean, the prices that you aren't expecting, I mean, it's got to come out of somewhere, right? Yeah, and it's interesting because that is one of the things that I look back on the Capitol, and um, I, I think, uh, Dr. Kaiser, like that happened, and you happened in 2020. One and then you had to do the the work to remedy it in twenty twenty one. Sorry, I was looking at the. Sorry, <laughs> uh, the the Daniel Street because again, when I look back in the budget, there was nothing in there. Even you know, we had the the plugging along retaining walls, but this is a you know pretty big project. But um, it it happened in twenty twenty. One kind of thing, and because you had to do the temporary, or was it was it in twenty twenty two that it actually sort of happened? That, it happened in the spring of twenty two. It is okay, yeah. So yeah, so it's about this time. So again, no wonder there wasn't planning in the budget. But mm -hmm. again, you don't have something like this, and and maybe you're not having some pressure for capital. I mean, there's always going to be capital requests, but this is a pretty major project, and that's why it's not seen, or not why it's not there, kind of thing in the previous years. Now saying that we do have a lot of walls in trail. Yeah. <laughs> Are we allocating for retaining walls as a whole that will need to be replaced over time? Well, in our our uh, maintenance and investigations, we haven't really determined that there are any imminent failures of these walls. The big block walls or big rock walls that are in place for building up well, the section of the Daniel Street wall that failed was a previous repair. So it wasn't part of the the original legacy walls okay. that failed. It was just a bad repair. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean that's a great question, but it is sort of those things that we do on ongoing looks at, mm -hmm. at these walls. We have lots of them, so it's not a case of oh, we'll just wait till they kind of fall down. We do go out, and sometimes you're uh, you know worried about what the result will be, but better to know and, and kind of you know be proactive where we can. Mm -hmm. And that's why, again, it makes a great point because um, I did put down here under line 45 and line 46, um, airport reserve and an IT reserve. Uh, we're going to be talking more about reserves and, and how effective they are and, and, and the reasons for them. And because uh, I think that there's a couple areas here that it would be great to, uh, again, as we work on the budget and, and uh, opportunities arise that uh, we're able to um, uh, I think look towards setting them up and just even putting some funding in there and being prepared because I know that the airport uh, I know Mr. Morell is going to come at some point in time and he's working hard on looking for grants and that sort of stuff uh, but when you get some you know that repaving of that runway one day or whatever sections of it that's not going to be a inexpensive type of work so and I guess that is just uh, to add to that, um, what kind of grant funding have we received this year for the airport, if any? So we haven't received any grant funding this year at all. Um, so this year, uh, the one of the reasons was when I took over last uh, spring, kind of reaching that deadline, um, you know, coming into the airport, when those grants have to be submitted. For example, the ACAP, which and is a capital assistance. Yeah, yeah, and B cap and yeah. these things. Th that's more into the December time frame. Okay. Um, but the A cap, which is a big one, right? And uh, I'm be submitting an A cap this this summer for uh, equipment okay. that uh, we are entitled to based on A cap requirements. Okay. So we'll be, be applying for some grants regarding that and BCAAP. Uh, just a heads up that you know what I'm looking at is in the next two three years is doing an apron expansion. Okay. Right. Uh, currently, we have two stands, right, with one taxiway. So one stand is for General Pacific Coastal when they're there, they're allocated that spot. The other one is for Medivac. Uh, sometimes when we have situations where I've got Pacific Coastal flight that's just landed, I have a Medivac flight, I have another Medivac coming in, it becomes a juggling fest. So with an apron expansion and an extra taxiway, we'll be able to cycle those aircraft through quicker with one specific spot dedicated uh, solely to Medivac. So that's the angle that I'm going to be going for for the grant and the funding. Right. And generally, based on our size, when you look at the cap requirements, <coughs> BC cap requirements, there's a, most of most of that project is funded, if not all of it, to a certain extent. Can't make any promises on that, but there is always some underlying initial costs to get, you know, engineering blueprints, the uh, you know, getting getting the site surveys, things like that done. Mm -hmm. 
um, that's we'll be coming forward with some some requests uh, as we see as we see the required. Mm -hmm. So, but that is definitely one of the long term, you know, two three year uh, projects that I'm looking at doing. Thank you. Somebody else has got their hand up. Well, I know I'm again too, just trying to try to read the room. You're all very good poker players. <laughs> well, I think your 4.47%, if I need, is more than reasonable based on what I'm seeing around the province. And I'm, you know, I'm relying on your expertise on this. And maybe perhaps we could even bump it up to near five. I don't know, in that range. I mean, it does, it would have to be helpful. But, uh, but again, I don't know where, you know, that, that, that's the kind of direction that I would need to get from Council. Yeah, I mean, personally, <laughs> I would like to keep it under five. Yeah, uh, that's my or my take on it. I'd like to keep it where it is personally. Yeah. 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 The four point yeah. seven. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. That's yeah, good. that's and fine with me too. So any any noddings from anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> thumbs up. Okay. Give yeah. 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 a couple thumbs up. Well, okay. So if that's that's the case. Yeah, that's excellent. Thumbs, the feet thumbing up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, then the next question just for me is that these other amounts did you um, okay. in particular the, the CIB did you, I didn't know where people were at for that and um, I certainly again on my side the market coordinator we could probably even you, you might even say like look at find it inside the, the the grants we already have I mean that takes pressure for others asking but that's uh, one way of uh, allocating it or like I was saying before um, Councilor Benson had said that they've worked really hard and they've got some additional silver city revenues that I haven't included so that would be something that could take some pressure off so. But then again, that would change next year because it's a one-time funding, right? So it's yeah. only going the um, CIB. Well, again, that's a great question. I, I, I think that council really needs to look at, uh, you know, CIB as far as the longevity of it. I mean, we sort of saw that with the incredible farmers market, where all of a sudden someone says, "I'm out of here," and all of a sudden now we've, you know, got a, a new issue. And I think council needs to look at. I mean, I think it's a very valuable program, but at what level do you need to have the program, and and how much is the, the you know the community wanting to put into their pockets and their taxes to continue on? So, so. Oh, sorry. Well, this is more a comment um, that I heard come up. The question was, what were some of the previous increases? And over the last four years, the average was two point nine nine seven five. Um, if you divide it by four. So I think like when we look at the pressures that we're seeing with inflation right now, a budget of 4.47 coming in is quite acceptable. And uh, especially as Councillor Cashel pointed out, when you compare, compare us to uh, many of our neighboring communities and those throughout the province, this is, a, is well below the average that we're seeing that's coming through. So uh, um, when you consider that there are some fixed increases, especially when it comes to staffing costs that will be increasing year over year, um, I think it's it's just it comes to me as a very acceptable sort of increase. So thank you very much, Mr. McClure. Thank you, Councilor Butler. Okay, well, if it's at that, then I'm kind of getting a sense right now. You're not asking me to go back and start carving the budget up. So I will just make this work as far as you know, getting the thumbs up on that. Okay, I will, I will do that. Okay, I'll look through some of the revenue pieces. I got the thumbs up. <laughs> Council Betsy, get out dancing. We're good to go. I think. <laughs> so we're, uh, um, if that's all, I don't have any other questions for Council. I appreciate your patience. I know this was uh, oh, thank you, late. Man. I know this is not work you put in. Okay, we're we're coming to an end, and so again, we'll I will bring the five year financial plan on Monday, uh, as well as the tax rate bylaw. Uh, we will have the first three meetings on Monday. We will need a meeting, and I don't I don't know exactly uh, if if the tenth is the kickoff of the beer gardens of the. Uh, or if it's the 11th, but I just try to figure out which day I don't interfere with council being not available. <laughs> if we want to have that uh, meeting just to adopt the, um, because it would be very long, it would just be a case of having an adoption. Councilor Benson has oh. the hand up. Yes. Just good reminder, Mr. McClure, that Silver City Days does start in nine days. So yeah, the 10th is when things kind of get busy, but we can, um, up until it's the 10th, we're probably good. So if we've got the meeting on the 8th, I would be suggesting if we could, and again, it would be a very short, but we just need to have that meeting and have council do it. 
So whether or not it could be a, I don't know, you, I know Council Wilson, you work, I know Council Benson works, so I don't know if it's like a 4.30, uh, gives you 15 minutes and then you're off to whatever activity, uh, great stopping or beer drinking or or, or throwing, uh, you know, Council, here. Uh, Council Wilson into the dump tank. I'm not sure which activity here. Question. question. Oh, what are we doing with the market and the um, CIB funding? Well, that's we a great question. It, it, I haven't concluded that. No, we didn't. I, well, I kind of wasn't getting a sense that uh, sort of like just figured out. It was sort of what it was the sense that I got from people. But if people okay. are comfortable or wanting me to, to say, hey, it's less or more for CIB, um, I can certainly do that. But I just don't know where you're at. I guess for me it's quite yeah. a uh, procedure. Uh, so the CIBC budget had been presented back in February. At some point, does it normally come to council for a a vote on whether or not we're going to approve it? How does, how does, what's the normal yeah, practice? I, just, I, I, would, I would agree with you. We would have more of a, a conversation about it. And I think we we briefly talked about you know some of the pressures that were coming because uh, Director McIsaac had brought in uh, through um, uh, Manager Moore had like the cost pressure that came up for the contract for flower beds right right and again you take the flower beds plus the cib undoubtedly you are king of the kootenies for the kind of money that you're putting into these things and i, I they're not going to deny that it's beautiful but sometimes it's like do you need another flower bed and and who's kind of where are you able to kind of pull this in because you know if you don't want to have another four and a half percent or five percent next year these are the sorts of places where you start looking around and again i know that we're late and so that's on me uh, but uh, it's, it's it's sort of where we're you know, hitting this year. And again, this year is this idea. I was a bit surprised. I mean, there's like five thousand dollars for bringing judges in and things like that. That again is not a, a, an ongoing thing. I don't think. But they have this year and next year. You get judged or they lose their, their bloom status. Yeah. So so that there's a, that extra yeah. expense associated to that. And it was voted in the committee that they wanted to get the judging done this year. And I know the cost of flowers, but I mean, I sit on the committee, uh, so obviously I bring some bias and I volunteer with the program but um i just like to give them some maybe some direction going forward so they know where they sit with their budget is we able to do that tonight um i'm getting the reading the room that was a forty thousand dollar increase uh, is 30, probably 30, 30 is 30, probably 30, not 30, yeah 30 uh, is where yeah uh it doesn't seem like maybe that's a uh, powerful amount do we want to you know, I'm not sure how this works. Maybe uh, you can give us help here, uh, Mr. Corporate Officer McIsaac, on where we want to give direction to Mr. McClure on on their budget. Well, certainly I can chime in if, if you wish. But um, presently, as I understand it, in the operating plan, uh, CAO McClure has included the hundred and twelve thousand dollars for CIB, which would be just a two um, percent or so yeah, lift. Yeah, yeah as compared to prior years. So if their budget, which um, we don't have before them, does include an increase of the $30,000, um, that really should be a, a decision made by council. You should be giving your CAO that direction, whether or not um, at this point to add that in into the budget without having though um, perhaps the breakdown mm -hmm. of budget where that increase um, <clears throat> would be targeted and to know then if that's going to be a recurring cost moving forward, say if it's contractual, um, and then you bear that cost in ongoing years, um, you may need more information perhaps from the CAO as to what that um, budget request is, um, but it really, again, it should be a council decision. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So that was my um, question before, though. If it's a one-time increase, I think it would be a little bit easier to mm -hmm. accept this year, and then moving forward, have a you know some time to look at it. Uh, the CIB contract for sure. Um, so yeah, I mean you've already got it in there, and it uh, doesn't affect the four point four percent, four point four seven percent increase, right? If we take it out or leave it in. Well, if you, if you, yeah, I mean, again, right now, where I would probably balance this is I need to go back and, like I said, probably plug in some money. I would probably put in some money for the sort of city days, and that takes some pressure off of not just this, but the overall ass sort of thing. So when I look at that, um, and some of my numbers, I'm thinking I'm probably taking $100,000 from uh, surplus this year to balance this to get us through to, to next year. And But I think it's, uh, again, a commitment for me as well that we're not, we'll be doing this a lot earlier. But it is a conversation I think that uh, needs to happen mm -hmm. with um, 
you know, knowing earlier and what the expectations are for communities in bloom. And I think part of it will be as well as understanding what other cost pressures you're having. If you've got, um, you know, larger uh, collective agreement uh, signings or inflation fires up again. So these, these are the sorts of things that really, you know, have to be looked at on whether or not you can afford to continue. But I do appreciate that, like I said, I wear that we're late in the day and didn't have a, a fulsome conversation on uh, on, uh, on communities in bloom and, and other things. So. so I would be comfortable suggesting that we accept these numbers here as a one-time increase, and then um, we can have a look at the communities in bloom contract that will give us time to prepare them, and um, it doesn't really change anything for it us. It does. Okay. Any motion? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you going to separate them out um, in case people feel differently about the communities in bloom than they do about the farmers market coordinator? Why? Yeah. Hmm. So right now, I think <laughs> Councilor Martin has one motion on for the CIB. First. <laughs> yeah. and he just needs a second. I'll second. That. Okay. Second. That. So uh, anybody, I don't see anybody online um, with any questions. So all those in favor of Councillor Martin's motion. Can I just get a, an explanation of specifically what that motion is, please? 30,000. Yeah. That we are accepting it? Yeah. yeah. For this year? For this year. Okay. 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 Guess, As yeah. a one time. So yeah. I'm, well, I'm trying to 140, but that it needs to be discussed and revisited for 2024. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor? Carried unanimously. And then it's a great uh, point by Director McIsaac, just, uh, oh, sorry, Corporate Officer Dr. Yeah. McIsaac, just on, on okay. the other motion for the Farmers Coordinator, if we wanted to support I'll, I'll make that motion. Okay. 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 I'll second it. So, Councillor Cashel and Councillor Hansen, all those in favor? Oh, did you guys, yeah, all those in favor? <laughs> Opposed? It's carried unanimously. Okay. Thank you.